Paula for curating the show, Paula and the team, also for arranging this uh, event. Um, and Olga, oh sorry, Olga, Olga uh, asked me if I would talk, I said yes, and I thought it might be good for me to talk a little bit about Lynn before uh, photography. That was my theme. Um, as you will, as will become clear, it, that title is not quite right. Um, I think it's the place to begin is in 1964, 1965, when Lynn was a student at the State School of Art in London. She, it was her junior year abroad. In those days, as uh, uh, students often uh, went away for their junior year, and she chose to go to London. And uh, uh, she was there for that year. And I think that was when she really became the idea uh, that she would be an artist, and that was going to be her life. That took hold. Um, she had done some work beforehand, uh, and she was doing a general uh, undergraduate degree at the University of Wisconsin. But it was in that year she decided that she would, that was what she was going to do. In, in the year, and I'd forgotten about this until I started to uh, reflect on what to say. In that year, she did take some photographs. She had a 35 millimeter camera. And I remember one picture she had of uh, uh, some sort of dolls in a, in a shop window. Uh, which she took in, in the Netherlands uh, when she, would, she went to, to look at some galleries in, 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 um, in Amsterdam and she took this picture and I remember her being quite pleased with that picture. But the, what she mainly did in that year was sculpture and uh, she uh, built a large uh, I'm doing this because that's how it looked, large uh, sculpture of, um, made out of wood. Um, and uh, uh, she worked on that quite a lot. And that was, I think, the, the main thing that she was interested in that year. Um, afterwards, after finishing the year, uh, she uh, went back to the University of Wisconsin and she worked on sculpture. She was a, uh, she, what she did was collect a bumpers from car bumpers and uh, weld them together. Uh, she was very much taken with the work of uh, uh, John Chamberlain, the great American sculptor at that time, and she built these, uh, built these structures. I don't think they really exist anymore, uh, but she built, built quite a few of them. Um, that was between 19... Uh, 65 and 1967. Um, but during those, during those two years, this came back to me, I, I'd completely forgotten it, and it's something they never talked about. Uh, she was doing photography with 35 mm, with a 35 millimeter camera. And um, in a way, it's a bit of a surprise when I think back on it. She, what she was doing was, um, parts of bodies, like photographing a, a, a part of a body like this, you know, um, and I, she would, it seems very funny to me um, now, but what she, the, the photographer she was interested in was Edward Weston and the, the peppers, <laughs> the famous peppers that he, he, he photographed. Um, and she was, Reasonably successful, I think, at that. At least she had two shows, group shows. She was in two group shows at the University of Wisconsin, which were photography shows. But I, I think it's true to say the main, her main interest was sculpture. And the main thing that she um, uh, worked on was sculpture. Uh, she, I think, I don't know if it was the, what finally decided her against, welding, but a, a piece of metal uh, went into a boot, she used to wear these big boots, 
and burnt her foot. So she, after that, uh, I think the sculpture was a bit less interesting. <laughs> um, but, uh, so that takes her up to 1967, so she was photographing uh, during those years. And Lynn never mentioned that. But then again, she didn't mention very much about the past. Uh, she, never, she was the worst, world's worst person documenting her own work and you know uh, what she was thinking. And I would often say to her, you should write that down, that's very interesting. But she never do it. Um, and as some of you know, during the um, say 80s and 90s, she didn't even date photographs or say where she came from. And there's no record. She had it in her head, but she never wrote it down. For her, the, the important thing was the next picture. Always the next picture. Even when she was in palliative care, she was talking about, maybe I could do a little picture of this. I could do this. I could do this. And so um, she was always much more forward-looking than um, uh, do documenting her own past or what she'd done. Um, in 1967, she went to the Oxbow School of Painting, which was, or art, uh, which was um, run by the Art Institute uh, of Chicago. And um, there she did printmaking. And I think that was the first time she did printmaking. Um, and the, the sculpture disappeared uh, from, from the work, uh, at least physically. Uh, I don't think mentally it, it disappeared ever. Um, but she was part of me. She, I get a wrong while well, saying, I suppose School of Art or Painting what is quite well done. I don't know if it's still going. But um, Joe Mitchell right, was there, for example, in the uh, well, 30s or 40s. Joe Mitchell, I, didn't come, I don't know whether Lynn knew of her at the time that that became one of her favorite painters in later life. Um, but, so she started printmaking in 1967, and um, almost immediately she had a lot of success with that. She was in the show um, in the Phyllis Kine Gallery, which is an important gallery in Chicago, and became more important in Cosby, Chicago, in New York, later on, at a show called Free three young printmakers, and she was one of the three young printmakers. That was in 1967, almost immediately after she started printmaking. And the following year, uh, she, she was in the Chicago area, Ch Chicago vicinity show, uh, which was run by the Art Institute of Chicago. And uh, she won the Logan Prize for print, for print. Um, I, the other day I thought I would Google Logan Prize and see what it, if it can find anything about it. And it, it's there, there's a whole list of the winners and Lynn uh, for the years, for you know, decades and decades, and they gave a prize to one or two artists every year. And she, it said to, that she won a prize of five hundred dollars in the Logan Award. Which which was not not nothing, five hundred dollars in those days. And for, for us it was quite a lot uh, because um, uh, we, we, weren't, we didn't have that much money. I should say, um, I met her in 1964 and um, by this time uh, she were, we were both living in, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, where, where she began to teach um, and she helped print uh, initially. And also was doing some student, being a student too, so she was doing both things. Um, so in 19, that was 1968. Now, um, when she won this prize, and she continued doing printmaking for another couple of years and then, then stopped. Um, I, I suppose I, if I was more tech, techno savvy, I could have. Um, find a way of making some pictures, but um, I then never really showed her, uh, her prints afterwards. So as I say, she was very, uh, she was very successful in 
that uh, she showed in a lot of prints and drawing shows in those, those years. Um, uh, I'm just checking this, I don't want to run over too much. Um, in 1968, uh, she did something which I found interesting, and this, I found it only recently, and I want this person to show it. It's the only, I'm sorry, it's the only slide I have. Um, can you um, uh, put my uh, slide up? This one. This is from 1968. It's called a relocation proposal. And she had this idea that she would take, uh, take things she found and put it into a gallery. And so you make the proposal, she says, you know, this is uh, from a pizza restaurant on the corner of here in Washington, Anna and Michigan, which is where we were living. You know? Then, um, and relocate in another environment. That was her idea. Uh, she also, I'll say a little bit more about this in a moment. Um, she also had the idea of putting rope around places and giving people a set of instructions to um, to uh, to get there. You know, so you you get a set of uh, directions of how to get to this location. Now she didn't. She didn't. None of these were realised. Uh, though she did, in 1968, uh, produce a, um, uh, in a show, which was at Eastern Michigan University, where she, where she was teaching, uh, she did do a, a piece which she took material from our apartment and put it into the gallery. I think they were expecting her to put, put some prints, but she did that. And I remember I was talking about how much she because they wanted to know the price, so we put an astronomical figure. <laughs> um, it was the same sort of idea. Now, um, uh, Gulen Bayer, a Belgian artist, did, did this um, about 10 years later, but he, he actually did it. You know, he actually did do the relocation in one of the documents, I forget which number it was. Um, so I, that's probably still his most famous piece, pieces he did, and um, he did the actual relocation. But then um, uh, had done this before. Now, not such a big deal really to do it before because a lot of people were doing this sort of thing. It was very much in the air. But Lynn was involved in this. But uh, I think this is a wonderful thing. And when I found it, I found it in some correspondence. I was going through the correspondence which would go to the National Gallery and throwing out all the, uh, the stuff which is not important at all. Um, and I came across this, this, and I was really surprised to find it because I knew that she'd done this, but didn't know that there was any record of it. Um, and you can see here some of the indications of what she was thinking about and what she liked and what would happen in the future. Somebody I, I showed this to, um, a friend in, in Europe, and they said, oh, it's all there. It's all there already. Um, that's not quite true. Um, but there's a lot of ingredients. And this afternoon you'll see with Phyllis Lambert in her, uh, in her talk, she does show a picture of a very early Lynn Cohen, and um, you can see it's very different from this. Um, so there was a, t but, but this did come more and more into place, and you can see the things which really would fascinate her. The, the, you know, the five chairs are all crooked, they're all different, uh, it, so are the, the two um, pictures, and you know, although you can't see it very well, there's a nice reflection of the bars in the, um, in the table, uh, there's a linoleum and there's the, the uh, plywood. And you can see that that's what, that was deep in her, really deep in her, I think. Um, and she, you can see, look, she says, photographs, measurements, notes, as to placement, and type of wood panel, tile, molding, counter material, light, etc. Right? That's, she had this, uh, it was very deep in her, I think. The, the love of materials. And um, you see it here in this, this early uh, piece from 1968. I think it's 1968, I'm not actually sure. I can only guess because the only show 
I know she was in, at Eastern Michigan University was in 1968, and I know she put, uh, put this, um, uh, I did this sort of relocation from our apartment to there. Um, then you see, also you see the, the original list, I'm scratched, smart, polished, ended, dusty, etc. That's what she wanted, okay? She didn't want, um, she liked that. She liked that very much. She, uh, that was for her a very important thing. Um, so, after 1968, um, <coughs> there, she began photographing really in 1970. That's my best guess. She started using a 5x7, a view camera. So that's when photography began for her, when she was starting to use a view camera. Up to then, she'd only been doing these occasional photographs. So in a way, this what I've been talking about is all before what she would count as photography for her, which is 5x7, and then soon after, she started using 8x10, and used the 8x10 negatives almost all her life, except occasionally when uh, she was traveling and it became too much uh, for her to, to uh, She didn't, uh, it was just too much to carry. Uh, it was a very embarrassing moment for, it was embarrassing for me because she wouldn't let me carry anything. You know? So here I was, this big guy, and uh, I may carry the, um, the tripod, she <laughs> 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 He's in a museum show at 
museum art at, uh, in Ann Arbor, and he's complaining about museums and how uh, and how they just what goes on the wall and how it's all um, all lies and uh, and he uh, and I think Lynn would have liked that. I certainly like it. Like it when I re reread it. Um, and he talks about you know the art street type thing. I didn't like that at all. And I think Lynn would have resonated with that because she didn't like uh, art street. She liked to um, uh, you know to uh, talk, say it as it is. Um, I. As I always tell people, I, I did, never heard her talk because she wouldn't let me talk uh, after hearing <laughs> lectures, but I think from what people say, that she, uh, she was always entertaining and down to earth, and no, there wasn't a lot of you know, theoretical stuff. The one thing, so I thought I would just finish by uh, mentioning uh, one thing here in this talk of Walter Evans. What happened, you see, after he given his little speech, he, he said, I, this is what he really wanted to do. Like he just wanted to talk to students. He wanted them to ask questions. I think there's about 15, 15 questions the students ask. And uh, student number nine, I there's lots and lots of things in the in the um, in the in the piece which I could pick out. But student number nine asks a very interesting thing, and Walker Evans gives a very interesting answer. And I can I can imagine Lynn uh, resin, you know thinking that's that's great. So what student number nine says, let me read this. Actually, he said he or she, I'm not clear who, says, when you photograph your billboards, this is the do you do it out of a sense of disdain or derision for them? Okay, the student asks. Are you deriding them or do you consider them beautiful objects? That's the student question. Walker Evans says, well, I love them, and I'm entertained by them. I feel they're stimulating and exciting and endearing. And I think that's how Lynn felt about these spaces. You know, she really did feel uh, stimulated by them, found them exciting and uh, endearing, too. Um, and it wasn't a sense of disdain or uh, derision. I mean, she's not saying anything here, right? This is just how it is. And that is what she liked. This is how it is. Um, this is the world out there, and the world out there is really amazing. That's why she called the book uh, her, not the last book, but one of the last books she did called um, Nothing is Hidden. Uh, that's a remark from Wittgenstein, and I said to her, you can't use nothing as hidden because there's somebody else has already called the book nothing is hidden. <laughs> <laughs> so for last year, she said, I don't care. I <laughs> wanted to, that, there is nothing hidden. It's just on the surface. The depth of things for her is well, it's always on the surface. Now, I don't want to go into any more talk about what, how I look at things and how I think she she saw things. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a background to um, uh, how she came to be where she was in 1970. And from then on, it was, it was, she was on the path. She was on the path. There were some little changes uh, early on, but she had her vision. And, and well, the person who said to me, everything is here, it's not quite right, there is a lot here, and, uh, at least in the spirit of what she was about and what really animated her, uh, I think. Also, and that quotation from Walker Evans really says a lot about how she saw things. Um, so, that's it. I'm finished. <laughs>